Well, we are here now with Ted Mosier. He is the president of the board of directors for the Ohio Military Hall of Fame. You guys have a big event coming up, don't you? We do, Charity. Uh, this coming Friday down at the State House, we have our 16th annual induction ceremony um, down in the atrium, and the public is invited. So if you're down around Columbus, please stop by. Well, even if you're not down around Columbus, I think that would be worth making the trip over there for sure. Thank you. Let's tell people what the presentation, what the ceremony will be like. Well, we have roughly an hour-long ceremony, and you have a normal the color guard comes in, and you have we have a a chaplain, and we have a, a speaker, which happens to be the director of Ohio's Department of Veterans Services, and that's Timothy Gorell. He'll make a few statements, but the meat of the ceremony is these 29 inductees we have this year. We will be calling them forward and reading their citations um, where they have gotten a, a medal for valor. Mm -hmm. Um, it's got to be a really moving experience. No question. No question. It's, there's four to five hundred people there, and a lot of times the families, that's the first time they've heard this. this is, if you're a veteran and you've been awarded a Medal for Valor, that's not normally something you go down and, and brag about mm -hmm. or even talk with your family about. When veterans get together, we, we horse around a little bit, but... Uh, but this is, this is a very, very moving and very solemn uh, experience. Uh, so, I, w I think it would be. I'm so grateful for everyone, anyone who serves our country and what they do. Um, do you think that you've seen in the past few years kind of an, an increase in perhaps patriotism or respect for those that are serving our country? I have, and, and I've seen it track from about 1990, the first Gulf War. Mm -hmm. People were more aware of, of the sacrifices of our service people, and that carried through the 90s, and, uh, you know, unfortunately we have 9-11, right. so we have a war on terrorism, and we deploy troops to some 100 countries around the world. Uh, you hear of a few but they're everywhere. I have a friend whose husband was a reserve officer and was called into active duty about seven months ago. He's coming home next week. She's That's so fabulous. excited. Yeah, it is wonderful. And I think that the whole uh, prominence of social media probably uh, makes people more aware and has helped more because I follow her updates every day just to see how he's doing, how Carrie's doing, and what's going on with him. Great. Now, That's speaking of not necessarily social media, but uh, the internet. That's, that's where you guys house all the names and honors of those in the Hall of Fame, isn't it? Thank you for asking, yes. Our, our website is www.ohioheroes.org. -E that will connect you to our website. And if you connect on inductees, there's a tab for inductees we have updated to include this year's um, inductees in their 2015. So you, if they've provided us with a picture, we have their picture with the citation they were awarded mm -hmm. for bravery. So this year it's 29, and they will join how many others in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I wish I knew exactly. Somewhere <laughs> in the neighborhood of 283. Oh, wow, that is a lot. And definitely deserving. I. Thank you. I want you to add to that every year. Let's talk about um, when it was established. The Hall of Fame started when? We started, our first ceremony was in 2000 in July. We started the year before incorporating and getting the nonprofit things together that we needed to get together. And, um, and we started in 2000 and we've run an annual ceremony ever since. Let's talk about some of the things we could do for our veterans and local heroes. Um, you being a veteran, you, you yes. can tell us what, what would you appreciate? Someone coming up and telling you thank you? What are things That's we can do? That's always appreciated. Um, <clears throat> I think it was in Toledo at a Cracker Barrel where a young man, yes. you know, came and... and 
you know, provided some money for, for a veteran. So It was very special, and that little boy is a special little boy. He's done a bunch of great things since then. He gave that veteran $20 yes. in honor of his dad, who was a fallen yes. veteran, a fallen hero. So it was definitely very special. Well, let's talk about some of the... Um, Inductee. Well, you know what? I want to save that because it's going to take longer than the minute that we have left. Okay. Let's talk first about how we can raise funds for the Ohio Military Hall of Fame. Well, you can get on the website and you can, there's a place to connect in to make donations. We survive on donations. Uh, we're a non, non-governmental agency. So that's, that would be very helpful. And I can, we've got a little bit of time to be eligible for the Ohio Military Hall of Fame, you have to be either entered the service from or born in Ohio and been awarded a medal for valor in combat. Um, so, and, and that's it. We, then we accumulate those uh, chronologically. Once we reach a class, then we move forward and we ha we're ready to go. Does someone have to nominate them or just th it's automatically nominated a, once they... A family okay. member can nominate. We, we don't go hunt down uh, nominations. Um, we may eventually do that, but we want to open up to people who, who wish to be involved. And a lot of times it's family members and, and, uh, and the people themselves. They can nominate themselves. If they qualify, we're good to go. All right. Well, I want to talk more about local people who have a local tie that are in the Hall of Fame. We'll do that when we come back. Stick with us. We'll be right back on Better Living. Welcome back. We're here with Ted from the Ohio Military Hall of Fame. They've got a big event coming up this Friday down at the State House, an induction, this year's Hall of Fame induction. We want to talk about some people that have some local ties to us here. Let's start with Frederick, I don't want to mess up anybody's name, Mac Rancy. Well, we, I read the applications, and, and Fred, if you're out there watching from Finley, I'm, I'm going to say Macrency, Macrency, and we're going to we're going to take a shot at. And I'll if we're wrong, please yeah. let us know. <laughs> well, here's what happens. He's he's a Vietnam vet, and we're down there at the State House, and we have somebody going through and getting the name, the pronunciations right at that time. So that's always tough. And having a name like Charity, trust me, I've been called lots <laughs> of different things through my life. Let's talk about um, Fred. He is a re he was a recipient of an Army Commendation Medal. That's correct, an Army Commendation Medal with V. So that happens from a, for a specific act of valor. He was he was awarded that in in Vietnam All back right. in 19. 69. All right. Well, he lives in Findlay, Ohio right now. That's correct. But we have some other inductees that kind of have some local ties. They may not live right here right now, but they have some ties to our area. Yes. Unfortunately, all are deceased, so these are posthumous awards, but they're among the highest awards uh, that this country uh, gives. Let's start with Alexander Drabik. Yes. He, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross medal, which is the and this United States Army. Everyone's heard about the Congressional Medal of mm -hmm. Honor, and that's a service-wide award. But the Distinguished Service Cross is the highest medal that the Army can award for valor. And he was involved in Germany in World War II. The citations are up on the website. If you click on inductees, you can, you can get to Mr. Drabik's. Um, information. Um, I, he, he was nominated by Joyce Lane of Toledo. Okay. And I'm not sure what the relationship is. There. And it looks like he entered service from this area, from Holland, Ohio. He, he, he did. He, bore, he was born in Holland and entered the service from Holland. All right. So definitely a local person. Harvey Ziegler was born in Delta, Ohio, entered the service from Bowling Green, yes. which is just down the road. Let's talk about his awards. Yes, he also was a recipient of the Distinguished Service Cross, again the the highest uh, award uh, that the Army gives uh, specifically, but he was, uh, uh, this was on D-Day, mm. so he was involved with, with a, 
a, uh, some action in Germany, uh, or, or in France actually on D-Day. So, so that's, um, again, the, the, the citations are very, I don't want to skim over them at this point. They're, they're worth reading and rereading. Uh, he was nominated by his son, um, uh, James Ziegler from Perrysburg. Well, that is a great thing for his son to do. That's the highest respect and honor I think that a, a no child question. could do for their parents. Then finally, we have Joseph Green, whose daughter is here, Marianne Ballas. She lives just right around the corner in Ottawa Hills. She sure does. Um, and, and she nominated uh, her dad, uh, again, a World War II veteran. He was awarded the Silver Star Medal. And this is just below the Distinguished Service Cross in terms of, of st status. But if you read any of these citations, uh, it's, it's powerful stuff. Absolutely. And they, all of these men have left a lasting legacy for their families. No so question. just honor and deserve all of our respect for sure. Now, we talked about uh, a few of the inductees for this year. Let's, uh, do, you have to, is, do you have to have served in a specific time, or can it be any veteran? No, we, in fact, last year we inducted uh, two Civil War, well, one Civil War and one the Indian Wars in 1870. Wow. The, the um, Claremont County's Veteran Service Office did the research and, and provided us with two names that these people were born in Ohio and, and were awarded a medal for valor. That's really cool. So anyone can do their own family research and um, give, us a, give us a call, hit us on the uh, internet. Well, on the other we'll end of out. the spectrum, then, it could be somebody who is just finished serving. No question. This year, we have 29 inductees, and the re we normally try to hold it to 20 to respect everybody's time. We mm -hmm. have about an hour to work with. We have 29 this year because we have a fairly large group that served in Afghanistan together. And different actions through different time periods during that tour of duty, they were awarded medals for valor and we're recognizing them all this year. I didn't want to split those up. Yeah. Well, they are certainly as deserving as anyone else, and we certainly. absolutely appreciate what they have done. Let's give people the specifics again. The ceremonies this Friday? Yes, this Friday down in Columbus, the Ohio State House starts at 1130. We start milling around about 10 o'clock to make sure everything's um, in gear, but that place is pretty full. Yeah. This is in the atrium. About 11 o'clock. Probably want to get there early. Yeah, the seats are usually, yeah, they're standing room only, and we have about 400 seats there. Wow. I think that would make it even more impactful. When, it's it's, stand, when people are standing around, it just makes it an even bigger event. And again, let's give people your website. Yes, www.ohioheroes.org, or just enter the Ohio Military Hall of Fame for Valor. You'll, and it'll get, pop up. you'll get to it. All right. Well, it is definitely something if you would like to go and look at all of these accomplishments some more, you can do that. They're all listed on there. You can also donate to this very worthy cause. We appreciate your service. We'll be right back on Better Living. Thanks, Charity.